think so. We now join this program already in progress. <laughs> so as we said before, <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Faith and Victory Church tonight. Uh, we had some uh, network connectivity issues, and <clears throat> but we're now up and running. Hallelujah. Or uh, Actually, I'm standing. I'm not running right now. Well, hallelujah, praise. But we're um, to have you with us and trust you'll be. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. And I like it. There we go. All right. We're out there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And um, praise the Lord. Well, we're, we're excited. Um, we've, got, we've come up with a, a graphic. We've got a little thermometer thing that we're, we've, we've designed. I guess you had a Sunday afternoon. Um, I actually had it done before I got home, I think. Almost done before I got home. Like we said, you know, so it's a, it's a bubble, and it's counting down. It's going from the debt to the zero instead of going, you know, up to we're trying to raise as much money. It's, it's going to count us down to zero as, as the thermometer goes up. So praise the Lord. And um, we're, we're excited. Uh, we'll next month uh, eliminate the third Debt, third, third one, one other one of our debt, beginning of next month, and um, which is exciting, leaving us four. Hallelujah, and uh, but those four are the bigger ones, <laughs> but it's okay. They're going away from here. Amen. Glory to God. But you know, it's kind of you know sometimes you little stuff is just kind of it's just like oh, I got to pay that. I got to pay. That. You know, it's it's gone, gone, gone. So two are gone. Third one's going. Um, uh, it may even be one that got paid off right at the end of the year sometime before we came in. Uh, we're, we're just excited what's happening there and uh, looking forward to having it completely gone. Glory to God. Talking there, and, and, and we got, we were talking about intercession last week. Remember, we were talking about how that in 26, 27, 28, that um, the Spirit um, makes, makes intercession for us with, for the saints according to the will of God with groanings, which we said, talked about how that was groanings. Or, or cannot be spoken in an articulate speech, and that, you know, the thing that God wanted out of us, the Spirit of God was looking for, was, y'all remember what, we, what he needed from What was it? We were in the earth? We were a what? We, we were a... And remember, that um, it seems that God could do anything in the earth except some man ask him. Human. The spirit of God, the voice of the earth. And so Paul said, and, and um, let's look over in 1 Corinthians, if we will. He says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, um, verse 15. He says, what is it? What, you know, back up, you know, back up to verse uh, 14. For if I pray in a, in a tongue, now, the unknown is not in the Greek, so it's, it's italicized. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, when he says here in 1 Corinthians 14, 14 uh, good gracious, that, in, in 1 Corinthians He said, my, when my spirit prayeth. Now, the Amplified Classic says, my spirit, that is a T and not a 7, uh, I have the Holy Spirit within me. Okay. So first Corinthians, you know, it says, My spirit prayeth, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prayeth. Which is accurate. It says that is accurate. Um, we know from the book of Acts, chapter two, it says, And they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It is spirit inspired, it is spirit initiated. Um, 
spirit initiated, human cooperated. Okay? Write that down. Um, tongues. I just didn't spell that right, did I? No, you in there, Eric. Yep. Just, I always want to. I always want to do that. Okay. Tongue is spirit initiated. I missed something there. I initiated it. Where, I in. I it. There we go. Ignition, spirit initiated. Okay, Emma. Yes, she. Right in here. There we go. There we go. And human operated. In other words, unction voice. Okay? When we speak in tongues, we get a spirit initiated. The spirit doesn't make us do it. He initiates it, but he doesn't make us. He's not. He didn't grab us and speak to us. He's human cooperated. Okay. So he initiates. He gives us the unction. We 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 work with that. We give voice. So we come back to this. We become the voice of the earth. We become the tool by which the Spirit speaks through, uh, as He gives unction. And so, as Paul said, you know, uh, in, uh, what is them? Uh, um, he says. In 14, 14, it says, Well, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, or my spirit by the Holy Spirit it prayeth, for my understanding is unfruitful. Now, can't, see, some people say, well, pray in the Spirit is just fervent prayer. Then your understanding wouldn't be unfruitful. I mean, your understanding is unfruitful. Okay? And I'll pray with the Spirit, and I'll pray with understanding. I'll sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. So Paul and without, we're not going to get into all this because there's a lot of correction he's doing here. People, people take his correction as a uh, slam on tongues. You know, you're not spiritual because you spoke in tongues. Now, Paul said I was going to do both, and he's pretty spiritual. As a matter of fact, he thanked God for more than all of them. All of them are all of them. Okay? So, so back this this thought that God has a voice in the Spirit. So the, so the prayer of intercession... Remember what we said we said last week about intercession? Um, there in Romans, the Spirit Himself maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Um, because what? For we know not. We know not what, Carrie? How to pray as we ought. Okay? So this prayer, you know, the prayer of intercession becomes the prayer by which things we have no idea how to pray for, things we know how to pray for, we can pray for them. We, we know how to pray for healing. The Word of God gives us, you know, gives us the Word of God. Um, we know how to pray for you know, certain things. We know how to thank God. There's a lot of things that we can, that we can know how to pray but then there are there's just things we just don't know. We just, we're clueless. And the Spirit of God enables us to pray about, isn't God good? Because the great The omniscient one. Now th this is this is a 
coming from science. All knowing. Okay? Omniscient. I hope I spelled that right. I before you accept that. There we go. Got my rule. Okay. Um, um, omniscience. Omniscient. Okay? All knowing. See, science, knowing, omni, all, all knowing. Omnipresent, omnipotent, all. Okay? Uh, the all knowing one, is it, is it the other way? So it's a rule breaker. Back to the right, spell it right with the first time. Okay. Do what? Go with your gut. <laughs> okay. All right. So the omniscient one knows everything. He knows how to pray for that circumstance or that situation or that person, the one that you, you can't figure out how to pray for. He knows and here, here's, especially when you pray about certain things, sometimes your emotions will get in the way and you'll pray it out wrong because your emotions will get involved. When I say pray it out wrong, you'll pray it from a perspective of carnality or fear instead of faith because you, you, you feel like it's, it's got to happen this certain way. Okay? Heard that Hagen say one time, you know, he was praying for his brother for years and years, and nothing happened. You know, and he, um, and got, he just got before the Lord, began to pray and seek the Lord, and, you know, praying, and, and um, praying in tongues and just spending time before God, and said, uh, and gave him the revelation. Now, see, here's what can happen in this, in intercession, praying things out according to the will of God, um, you know, making intercession. God can reveal to you exactly what to do. And often does. Okay? So as we're inter interceding about something, revelation can come to us about what step to take. Now, in this particular case, the Lord told him, says, um, tell us that's been, um, you know, basically harassing and holding your brother in captivity to, to be loose him and let him go in the name of Jesus. He did 15 days later. He got saved. See, now, we hear that. We run off to try to copy it sometimes. You can't, see, you got to follow the Holy Ghost. The leading of the Spirit is as valuable of a tool in our walk as a believer as anything we have. In relationship to and in conjunction with the Word of God. Because He will not lead you outside the Word. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, go divorce your husband or go divorce your wife or go marry that person to save them from their sin. That's just, you know, some people, I've heard, listen, you think I'm joking. People come up with the craziest, wackiest, off-the-wall, lunatic stuff you'll ever hear and say, God told me. And you just kind of go, pinball wizard. <laughs> you feel like you're you know, doing the Elton John pinball wizard from what, the, wi the, the wizard, the whiz, whatever that movie was? Yeah. Huh? To Tommy. Okay. Yeah, he, did he do, did he, he's the one that did it? Okay. The song? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, the pinball wizard. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you just look at people like that. You know, like, where'd you come up with that stuff? You know, you know, and you're like, but God, but God, I know God. No, the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, read your Bible. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God agree. They're in harmony. If the, you know, just, just if you even had any concept of the Bible, if the Holy Spirit is God and Jesus is the Word and He's God, then they're going to be in harmony because of the uniqueness of the Trinity uh, is the perfect, perfect harmony of the Godhead. Okay? There, there is not a um, separation between the, 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 the beliefs or the uh, operations of the Father and the Son. I and my Father are one. Okay? I only do those, do those things as I see my Father do, Jesus said. Okay? And how be it when he, the Spirit of God, come, he will not speak of himself. He'll remind you of whatever I said. 
So whatever the work of the Holy Spirit is going to be is going to be in line with what Jesus has already declared. So he's not going to come down here and tell you to divorce somebody and go marry somebody else because that's what God's plan is to get them saved. Stop smoking that wacky weed while you're reading your Bible. Okay. People do that, by the way. All right. So back over here. I, you know, I will pray with the Spirit. I'll pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, sing with the understanding. So Paul had said here in verse 14 that, you know, my spirit, by the Holy Spirit, prayeth. And so if, we're, if we are understanding that we have a voice in the earth, that whatever we're praying out is spirit-initiated, but human-cooperated, and it, it brings about the will of God. This is, if this is what its ultimate end is, is the, the birthing, let's say it this way, without getting weird. I'm going to tell you something. Charismatics have done some of the craziest, looniest things I've ever seen in my life. And I was a charismatic. Okay, You might still call me a charismatic. All right? They would get an intercession meeting. This is, this is what turned people off. This is what people run from and start, and start withdrawing from and stop having... They would get in, in the, in, and get in the floor, and they would get into birthing position. If the other person would get out in front of them while they're praying in tongues as they give birth to the spiritual baby. Now, you think I'm joking. You think I'm making it up, but I'm not. Sad to say. I mean, I'm, I'm sad to say I'm not making it up. And we had, there was almost like a movement around the church with that kind of stuff. And you wonder why normal people withdraw from certain spiritual things because of loony being over there and nobody correcting it. Nobody saying, get up from there and stop acting the fool. That's not the Holy Ghost. I mean, they're going, oh, yeah, they're birthing. You got somebody waiting to catch a baby. And then you got non-charismatic, non-Pentecost people look at this going, them people are crazy. And I go get, and I I could get up in my seat, walk around there, and put my arm around them and say, You are you are right, buddy. They are crazy. <laughs> they are just absolutely loony bins. And so we with, we withdrew and, and, and so some of our stuff got so far crazy, warring tongues and all this, we began to withdraw because we didn't want to be associated. With, and that was all for with the devil. Because if Satan can't keep you out, he tries to push you too far and bring a reproach on something so that people don't want to have anything to do with it. And it's sad because God still wants to have a voice in the earth. So much. So many people have withdrawn that. Now, now our charismatic services are just really cool following light shows with, with some really rocking music. And we lift our hands and go drink our wine and drink our and craft beer after church talking about how free we are. I'm going to tell you something. If you leave a service with the presence of God on you and the savor and the fragrance of God on you. You don't need to go to the bar. You don't need to go to the, to the restaurant and get your Chardonnay or to go to the craft beer house and get your craft beer after church. Because you, you carry the savor of his presence. This is what we've missed. And it's all started with, with Satan pushing us too far in some directions. And nobody really standing up with a voice and saying, stop this foolishness. Or when they did, they got ridiculed by mag you know, by leading Christian magazines and you know whatever and, and, and this kind of stuff because they were just being old fashioned and shutting down their voice of correction, and then it leads the church into nutsville, and then what happens? The move of God gets gets thwarted. People fall into other things because you know it's, you know we, we get when you when you start catering to something that's not spiritual then it's, got to, it's catering to something. 
and it caters to emotion and flesh. See, these people getting in this birthing position thing, they thought they were, oh, I'm, look at me how spiritual I am. I'm, I'm, I'm acting out in the spirit. No, you're not acting out in the spirit. You're acting, it's, 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 it's some old folks used to say, you're acting the fool. And, and, they, and it became this, you know, this show. I, I remember I went to a, a convention, and um, there was this woman there, and where do you go to church? I don't go to church. I, I fly around the country, and, and, I, and I come, and I'm an intercessor for so-and-so. Oh, okay. So you don't have a pastor. No, I, I'm an intercessor for the ministry. I, 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 wherever they go, I fly and come, and I go out before services and pray. Well, before the services, you know, I look up there, and there they are. They're down in front of the platform, all walking around, you know. It's, it's so showy. That it's a turn off. Instead of, you can do that right back in the back where you're not being seen. Where, you're, where it's, it's in private. Because that which is done in secret will be shouted from the rooftops. That's what, you know. And that we say that we, we a lot of times use that in negative things. And if you're in sin, it's going to get shouted from the rooftop. But on the other hand of that thing, those things that are prayed out in secret will be shouted from the rooftops. Those things that are. You know, remember what Jesus tells, you know, um, um, talk, when he talked about the Pharisees, how they, they love to stand in the, the places and, you know, and be, be law, basically lauded for their great prayers and all this stuff. And that's when he told them, you know, go into your, go into your chamber, wash your face. See, this is, this is where intercession belongs. That kind of intercession, unless there's a corporate anointing in a service, you know. The thing we do have those things, but we don't we don't try to force that out. Okay, we don't try to force that into play, you know, to to get into intercession and you know and groanings and you know, um, uh, let's all come up here and let's we're going to intercede now. Remember, the spirit initiated. Okay, now we can we can pray, we can veil ourselves to God. And, 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 and allow ourselves to be used of God. And, and, and I'm trying not to go so far in the other ditch that we can't ever have, you know, we're in a service and we're praying and, you know, the intercession, spirit of intercession falls on the congregation and we begin to intercede about things that God's leading us to intercede about. Don't want to go that direction either. We can't do that. I'm trying to just say, but when we're trying to be, when, when we've taken it out and it becomes a show, that, you know, the birthing, you know, the look at me how great I'm intercessor I am. It loses, it loses, it's, it's a turn off. Here's the thing. People recognize God. Now we had, we had, we had somebody um, a few years ago come to our church, visit our church. Um, we lived in my neighborhood. And, um, you know, he came when, when Bruce and Cindy were here. They were here. And um, he was dealing with some, some, some serious physical things. And, um, Came up at service for Bruce to pray for him, and I mean, I mean, I'm hearing talking. I mean, I'm standing up there. This guy's not. This, this guy's not a. Um, he's not a charismatic word of faith type person. And he's like, man, I've never felt anything like that in my life. Bruce pray, laying hands on, him, praying for him. You know, he came to visit church a couple times after that. You know, but uh, he wanted to do some things. That, you know, I was like, man, look, you just need to come to church and and, and, and grow some. You know, you need to get healthy. And, um, because he wasn't ready. I mean, he's a bit of cussing while he's talking about wanting to do stuff. And I'm like, hey, look, look, you, listen, I'm, 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 you know, fine. I want you, I'm glad it's for you too. Let's grow some. Let's get you well. Let's get you whole. This is a, you, 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 you're in a whole other realm that you've never been in before here. And, um, I'm, you know, we're willing to get you there. But let's, let's get you whole. And, um, but even, even with all his lack of understanding of all that stuff, he was like, he recognized something greater. And I've seen it happen to people. I remember, um, I, I, you can't not talk about the Holy Spirit in his manifestation in our life when you're talking about inter, being in intercession. Because they, they do go hand in hand. The moving, working of the Spirit and being in intercession are a, are a joint process. And, um, but people will recognize God. Um, I've heard people say things, you know, that weren't um, 
charismatic word of faith, you know, and, and, they, and they were like, man, that was a beautiful language. What was it? Somebody said, that was tongues. Oh, I didn't know that. That was beautiful. That was God. You know, they recognized the Spirit of God. Now, they were in a church that didn't believe in speaking tongues, thought it was of the devil, but after they were around the presence, they knew it couldn't be. Now, Brother Hagin, Brother Hagin, they came to him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost, and he went back, and one of his, um, one of the ministers in the church was a, was a graduate of a major Southern Baptist Bible school, and he was telling him, stay away from them Pentecostals. He said, he said why? He said, because them tongues are of the devil. He said, well, he said, I'll tell you one thing. If tongues are of the devil, he said, the entire Southern Baptist denomination is going to hell because they're of the devil. He looked at him and said, what are you talking about? He said, well, the same spirit that uh, saved me is the same spirit that baptized, is the same spirit I got when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. There ain't no difference. You know, man didn't have a whole lot to say at, at that point, you know, but he was like, I reckon, he recognized. He recognized the same spirit of the new birth as the same spirit that infilled him. Amen? And people recognize when God's in operation and when the net bag is in operation. Unless you're let, you're con they can, people convince you it's God even when you're, everything in you saying it's not. Not your head, in you. You can have your spirit going I remember when um, we first got saved, when, you know, Janie and I, and the, the, our, our Pentecostal church was, um, uh, Pastor Gentry, we, did, we just love him, we still love him, he's, he's retired now, and, um, you know, he'll pop up on Facebook, you know, telling us happy anniversary, and then he'll say, every time our anniversary comes up, he says, I was there, before you, where you did it, <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he retired from the PH church, and and then went back into the church a few years later, uh, that church, and became what, like a lay minister, visiting minister, and, you know, go, go visit the sick or whatever, that kind of thing. Kind of, kind of something did not, most of our churches wouldn't do that because they, if they didn't like something, they'd try to split the church again, take all the people back out. Um, but uh, he would never do that. I, I can guarantee you that. And, um, but hey, I got called on the carpet one day. We had, I'd been saved just a few months. And, uh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> yeah, 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 and he said, I, I, need, I need to talk to you about something. I'm like, well, okay. I, I hear y'all were having a, having a prayer meeting over it. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, the, um, me and Janie and, and then another guy and his, his uh, girlfriend, soon to be his wife, um, and um, some of the older family, Fred, and, 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 and another person, and then my one, two, of them were, two, of them, two of them ended up being my roommates at Ramah. Um, and... Um, we're all over at you know this one place having we we, we met weekly we have a, we'd have a little Bible study prayer meeting kind of thing, and um, now two of the guys had been had lived in a homosexual lifestyle and had uh, one of them I mean one had been married had kid had uh, gone into that sin and and then God delivered him he got he he he's, he got remarried again and. Served the Lord that's in ministry and stuff. He's, 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 a, he's a, just a sweet, sweet guy. Um, and but he's back. You know, he, he got he got straightened out. And it's a spirit, folks. It's a spirit. And um, but um, so I'm I, I'm you know, and guy goes and, and pastor goes low. So I'm, I'm hearing this homosexual seance is going on. And I went. Now you you got to understand. I'm I'm twenty twenty one. I lift weights. I'm a jock. I mean, I'm I'm, a, I'm I'm and I'm a weight. By this time, I'm a weightlifting stud. You know, I'm I'm benching 360 in my workout. I'm squatting 400 four, 10 times. You know, I'm deadlifting 400. I'm you know you know doing you know. I mean, I've got arms. I got chest. I got legs this big around. I mean, I'm just I'm I'm huge. You know. What? Uh uh. That ain't that ain't here. You know, you ever seen an arrow? I'm straighter, you know. And um, I said, I, and I thought, and I, and I remember what happened. I, oh yeah, we had a candle burning, and a breeze in the room. Now you listen, just because there's a breeze in the room, don't mean it's the Holy Ghost blowing through the room. You know, you do have air conditioners that have vents and stuff, and, and cause drafts, especially for candles. You know, and, and it burnt down one side. Oh, that's God. They got all, they started, they started 
talking about trying to spiritualize this candle burning. Now here, I ain't been saved long. And I'm like, oh, brother. And of course, I, I'm dating Cherokee over there. Okay? She don't trust nobody. Okay? Um, I, I said, Pastor, I, I said, I said, he, he just got excited. I said, there was nothing about that that was spiritual. Nothing about that going on. I said, now he said some stuff. I said, but I can tell you, you know, he said, I'm just making sure because I can't have that going. I, I, I understand. You can't have that going. I understand that. But let me just, just I can assure you, <laughs> there won't nothing weird going on, on on our end anyway. He he tried to make something out of something that wasn't to be made out of. But you see, that's what a lot of times our charismatics will do. They they get a goosebump and they thought it was, you know, a, a sign in the sky. Okay? And um, but outside of that, most people, if they'll step back and listen, they'll know by the Spirit what's right. Whether you're charismatic or not charismatic. Something on the inside telling you when something's right and when something's not right. That's called the Holy Spirit. Well, they ain't got the Holy Ghost. They may not be baptized by the Holy Spirit, but if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. Okay? There's not a different Holy Ghost. You don't get baptized with a different Holy Ghost than the one you get born again by. Same Holy Ghost. Okay? He's the same. The, the voice, the, the spirit that bears witness with your spirit, that you're a child of God, is the same spirit you get baptized with. Not going to have a different voice. Okay? He doesn't have a different voice. It's the same Holy Spirit. So you can think because you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you've got a leg up and that you know, you're the only one who can hear from God. I got news for you, buddy. People who aren't baptized in the Holy Ghost, who are born again, have the voice of the Spirit, they can hear God. Okay? I'm not demeaning being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm just saying we can't we can't get weirded out think because we act squirrely that that gives us a leg up on spirituality. It gives you a leg up on stupidity. So, because of these things, by and far, and a large portion of, of our charismatic word of faith circles, we've backed away from a lot of these, these things. We've backed away from the move of the Spirit. We've backed away from because of excesses and, and squirreliness. I mean, granola Christians are out there. They're out there. You know? And, um, I mean, we got people trying to teach people you know, how to give a word from God. You know, here's how you prophesy. Um, you know, and they go out there just, and, and, and God blesses ignorance sometimes just because you're being stupid, because you're, you know, you're ignorant. You're wanting to do stuff or whatever. But you, you can't just go up there and, and start prophesying anytime you want to prophesy. I remember a group used to go tell her, you ever pro you've never prophesied over anybody? Lay your hands on the person beside you and prophesy over them. Well, again, the gifts, like tongues, spirit initiated with human cooperation. I can't just lay hands on Joe and have a manifestation of the gifts of healings if it's not in manifestation. I can lay hands on Joe and pray according to the word of God in faith in, in agreement with him. But I cannot make the gifts of the spirit or the gift of, of healing be in manifestation. That's spirit initiated. Tongues are spirit initiated. I avail myself. And he will pray through me. Okay. He, in other words, he gets the unction. He's there. And if I yield myself to praying in tongues on a personal level, I get now moving over to the spirit of intercession is a different thing. That's a different. That's a different anointing. Tongues, brother. Hey, you should say tongues, whether for personal use or for uh, through the gifts of tongues, man, you know, manifestation of the gift of tongues, are the same in essence, but different in manifestation. Now they st they're still tongues, but one is. Where you, you pray in the Holy Spirit because you're born in the Spirit, and the Spirit by His Spirit prays, with, prays through you. The other is, initi is, is initiated and unctioned by the Holy Ghost for the purpose of ministry. You can't make that one happen as you desire, anytime you desire. You can, you can learn to so cooperate with Him, you know when He's moving in that direction. I am. Um, 
I uh, I know that in the time we've been here, since we've had to leave our other place, there's it, it's there's almost an inhibition to flow. And I don't I don't know as much the Holy Spirit as it is just the setting and um, the lack of comfortability to be able to function there for for whatever reason. Um, it's not that we we don't love God, but it just seems as if there's a, as a, as a, as a people just the whole atmosphere for being able to function and some things are not there. And you say that atmosphere has to be there, okay, for us to, to, for things to happen. So, um, which I believe is why God spoke to me about the money thing. I'm, I'm, I'm knowing. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm like, Lord, we, we just, we've got, to, we've got to be able to get to these things. These things have to. Be, that's 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 one of the earmarks of our ministry. And to be able to function and to flow here is is important. And um, you know, and to bring, I hate to say it this way, but bring fresh meat in. Yeah, you know, but let's face it. When 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 if everybody in the congregation has grown up at a certain point, you're not going to get a word every week. Now, you can have things happening where new people are coming in and, and things are happening, and God's speaking things to new people all the time. But with the older, you're not going to get it for the older people all the time. Why? Because he expects you to learn how to be led by the Spirit, not not depend on a word. He'll, he'll, he'll do certain things for you as a babe that he's not going to do for you as an adult. He's going to expect you to grow and walk on your own two feet. That means you won't ever happen. Um. I know in ministry, you know, there are times that you'll, do, you'll, you'll function and operate certain ways you may not ever function and operate again. Wouldn't you like to function that way every day? Every single time I get to church, I like for that to be like that. It's just nothing like it. But if, it, you know, if the Spirit of God doesn't lead, like I told about the, about the girl who came in and God showed me in advance, showed me in a vision what was going to happen in a service. I knew exactly what was going to happen. And, um, you know, but I, I can't recall Another time after that, that I had anything close to that kind of specific vision or anything where, the, where I knew in advance what was going to happen, exactly what was going to happen. Exactly. I mean, you know, just kind of things, you know, you, you, know, you, you somewhat wonder, because never, it's never happened to you before, you somewhat wonder about it, and you're kind of like, um, I mean, maybe I was just dreaming that up. Maybe I was just kind of, you know, Making that one up, kind of thing, and then when ha and then when you and then like in that particular case, I'm, I'm preaching, and all of a sudden that girl walks in, and I'm like, well, that is exactly what I saw, and, and, and you're not wondering anymore. Are you here? And um, I mean, you're kind of like, well, I know what to do now because I've already seen that, you know. Well, I haven't had. Boy, wouldn't it be great to be able to minister like that every service? It would. I mean, I I'd just be. Come to church, kind of cocky, laid back. Well, Joe, let me tell you what's going to happen today. You know? And next week, I'll pick somebody else to tell them what's going to happen today. That'd be awesome. But no, what do we do? What, what do we do if that doesn't? We go ahead and we do it. We, we, we go into a service. We're led by the Spirit. We, we teach the Word of God. We preach the Word of God. Um, we trust the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in ministry. And, um, you know, if you and if you get led, you get. If you don't, you don't. You just go. You, you go home happy because you just did what he told you to do. Boy, it's fun when the other stuff happens like that. Okay, and um, so praise the Lord. So, what I want us to do is is start becoming more aware um, of the Holy Spirit, be giving ourselves. Uh, particularly outside of church, more more attention to, to the Holy Spirit, praying in the Spirit, interceding. The future of our church is bright. Okay? Um, there are things that God spoke. And, and again, uh, that, that's happened in vision form. And, um, you know, I saw in the Spirit. And so and, and it, what I saw hasn't happened. Well, I wasn't trying to make up a vision. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to create some kind of vision. I mean, if that was true, I'd sit around dreaming up all the time. You know, I'd be telling you we every I had a vision. I had a vision. I had a vision. Now I'm still telling you one that I had thirty years thirty years ago. 
because I saw it. And when I, and when I start talking about it, I can see just as real right now as I did then. Now, how long did it last? About five seconds. All this happened in five seconds. It, at least it, it seemed like this. Now, it may have been longer. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I say five seconds. It was, it was quick. It wasn't like I was about three hours on the floor and, you know, and I was floating in the sky and, you know, angels were floating around me and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it wasn't any kind of, I don't have any spectacular story like that one. All right. You know, angels took me away and I was gone a week and I came back a week later and I had a full head of hair and, you know, they had this guy a, few year, a number of years ago, he had, he supposedly had gone to heaven and it took him a week to get there and a week to get back. And when he got back, you know, after he came out of, this, out of the vision, his hair had all grown back and uh, he was selling his tape series when I went to heaven and the thing was his story changed and, and, and kept, you know, the story kept changing and um, yeah, you, you started, you know, some, some things just start, didn't add up. You know, um, if to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, it don't take a week to get there. Hello, I mean, and so you know, this this guy was going around the country. And people people love heaven. They love stories about heaven. You know, they they love you know that movie that came out with a kid who supposedly saw Jesus and you know and of course they came out later and said it was all made up. They family made it up or something. That this movie was a couple three years ago um, about you know he he saw Jesus or saw heaven or something and you know it was a big hit movie and everybody and then then he then comes out later he made it supposedly made it all up and uh, you know here again get to discredit the body of Christ. You know, all these things happen to discredit the body of Christ. We were always trying to discredit and. Um, and finding ways to do it, because we get so gullible. Because, but the problem is, everybody, want, everybody wants, everybody either hungers for revelation about heaven, or even if they're not saved, they really want heaven. Now, one of the ways they deal with the fact is of, of the unknown is they don't believe in it. But really, in their heart, they want heaven, and we're drawn to that. You know. Just like um, I can only imagine, you know, the Mercy Me come out song of a radical Christian rock group to a mainstream Christian, contemporary Christian group with a song that crossed over all the charts, country, pop, everything, I can only imagine. Because it talked about heaven. It talked about the things, that it's, it's spiritual, it's a thing, it's man being reunited with God. And I've, I've drifted away off my subject matter here. But there's, there's that connection of spiritual things that, that we need to be in the flow of. And we get there interceding for the church, interceding for the body, interceding by the, will, by the function of the Holy Ghost. We're praying things out in the Spirit to establish and to prepare and get things ready. Amen? All right, praise the Lord. All right, let's close it up. Glory to God. We sure love y'all. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. And we bless you. And remember this, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If you're watching tonight and you want to be a part of our debt destruction campaign and you'd like to give uh, over the next year, um, you know, a one-time gift or, or a, a 1200 or a monthly gift of 100 or, or less, you know, maybe if there's, you know, we're not, we're not um, snooty. It's just that the amount the Lord gave me was 100 And, um, you know, we're, we're paying our debt down. Um, you know, but we got some, we got some people in that group that make up the hundred. Uh, several together make up that hundred. You know, got some twenty and fifty and fifteen here. We have some of that going on, and uh, that's 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 absolutely perfectly fine. If you'd like to be a part of this, uh, there's information that'll be coming up on your screen, and uh, you can be join up with us. Amen. Uh, but until we meet again, we love you. God bless you. Remember this: this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Am I vocally off? Okay. Da, 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 da. Huh? Yeah, that's right.